And that's Theodora. Theodora. You may call me Teddy. Look, I'm here tonight about another serious issue about my vehicle that was stolen in June of last year. And I have some paperwork that I'd like to pass around to you guys. My vehicle was put in the shop because I'm getting old. I'm tired of getting on the ground, changing oil and transmission fluid. I decided to take it to the shop because I had always worked on my own. Mm -hmm. Carted to the shop, 133P East Bell Boulevard, next to the police station, and it was on the lot with nine other vehicles. The guy says to me, we can fix it, leave it, and I asked him about the decals. They ran out the next day, so I put the new decals on, and he gave me the razor to scratch it off. And lo and behold, he said, come back Monday, we'll have it ready. I called Monday, no answer. Called Tuesday, no answer. Called Wednesday, I got on a bus from Howland Park, went to Southside Plaza, walked up Bell Boulevard, and my car along with the other nine cars were gone. Now, how do you reward a good driver? I have been driving over 50 years, haven't had a ticket in 40 years, no suspensions, but this guy stole my van. I called Seabirds, they didn't have it. I called the police tow lot, they didn't have it. So by me being a Tom girl, I worked at the junkyards. I called around and I found out that my car, my van with the air conditioning, and the tinted windows had been taken over to Sims Meadows, used to be Pex. And this white boy was standing there with a picture of my van. He had a false title. They crushed my van. And I have been waiting for a whole freaking year for the police to get this thing in court. They drug the case all the way through a year now. I went in on May the 1st. White boy stood up and admitted he had stolen my vehicle along with these other vehicles. How did he get bond? <laughs> he was a white boy. Y'all need to start treating people differently in this city. People are getting tired of discrimination. The judge says to me in court, we're going to give you a thousand dollars. And I say, what? For my van, rust free, air conditioned, tenant windows, where am I going to find a van like that? For my health, I've had five heart attacks and a stroke. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I was brutally beaten by Deputy Sheriff Kevin Ferguson in uniform, pepper sprayed in my face as I stood outside waiting with some elderly friends. We were going to brunch and jazz. I'm a musician. That sucker sprayed me. Double thrust punch me in my chest like Bruce Lee, knock my bony tail clean over there to that camera, and he never got a day. They hid it, I never got a dollar, and I want to know why the police are telling me since my license, they have suspended my license, put a $700 fine on me, I've been waiting for DMV to send me paperwork. They never sent me a notice. My time is not up. I'm walking, boo. You get over it. Yeah. I say this. They have All suspended right. my license, right. had a $700 fine on it, right. and they are right. telling me that I cannot. Um, there's somebody in the back that can help you, Cecilia Garner. I just want the people in the city of Richmond to know that DMV does not send out <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Ms. Palm, that's it. Should we call Lisa? Or just let her go? Hmm? Yeah. What is he giving up? 
No, come on. Miss Parm, Miss Parm, you're going to have to, Miss Parm, Miss Parm, your, your time is up. You're going to have to, you're going to have to sit down. Okay, we're going to get her out. Yeah, all right, let's call a five minute recess. Hey, we're calling a five minute recess. Okay, recess is over. Madam Clerk, would you call the next speaker? I mean, Mr. Clerk. I know, I make that I need a speaker. sign up here that says Mr. I know, I tell you. It's been one of those nights. The next speaker is William Howard. Oh, yay. What's with him? Is it on? Try again. Is it on for sure? Talk into the mic, sir. Let's make sure it's on. Mm -hmm. Could you talk into the mic? You don't have to touch anything. Just say something. It's on? Okay. We do. Good evening, of, sir. We're glad you're here. I got you. Members of council. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is uh, William Howard. I live 724 North Street in the city of Richmond, in the second district. Um, I own my home. I paid for that home years ago. And I noticed that since we had this new mayor, that my tax exemption for the elderly has been removed. And I've been working, trying to get it started again. And I haven't got it, not since this mayor that we have now been in there. And I notice he's, he give, because I still watch what goes on down here. I watch it every night, all day. And I noticed that the mayor been stealing my money. And I don't mind saying it because I got box of evidence of it. I have a paper right here. And the only person that I see that realized what has been happening to me is Miss Trammell. And I'm here tonight to push this HR 4115, which was made legal today in Washington, D.C. Because tomorrow I got to go over to McGuire and add my children all on this, my grandchildren, everybody. And this mayor been stealing my money, having me pay 200 and some dollars every month for something that, and got it jacked up where I 
$2,000 behind that they, he said. And he puts on now what he calls the Mass Supper. He sent somebody out to my house last month to fix my water. I found that that guy come out there with you the story. Please begin to summarize. Well, I think that the only person that see what's going on is Ms. Trammell. And I'm here to push to see that Ms. Trammell become the next mayor of the city of Richmond. Mm. Thank you, President. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. If you're having trouble with tax relief for the, ma'am, if you're no, having, ma'am, I don't get my tax exemption for the. Yeah. I'm going to send you to a lady in the back of the room who can help you with that. Her name is I was Celia at the last Garner. Madam, Madam President, she can help you with your tax relief. Yes, ma'am. Madam President, Mr. Hale, you are so right. I don't Sorry. trust nobody. William, else. let me tell you, William. Sir, let I me tell you. Trust Ms. Tram. Let me tell you. Yes, you and I've been. Hell, talking. yes, you know what's happening. Yes, sir. And Madam President, I'm going to say this right now. I think it is a shame that our seniors, not only him, but others, some of them in my district, and we're going through it right now, where I help one of my neighbors who's not able to read and write mm -hmm. fully. I helped her with that form, put the stamp on it, and I know she mailed it. They are denying her her tax relief, saying they didn't get it. Got a few more in our 8th district, and I know that Ms. Parker's been trying to help them with it to find out exactly what's done happened, because they have been denied. And now they are trying to find the money, can't find the money, don't have the money, and they have been disqualified because they said they didn't get their letters. I said that I think this council needs to relook at that, because if they're getting lost wherever or not getting there, through the mail, because as we've heard some of our colleagues say, we have sent our newsletter that gets to the people three, four months later. And I, too, have had that problem. But I think it is a shame that our seniors have to go through this when they don't know. And then they get this thing, another letter that says that they have been disqualified and they can't apply no more for another three years. And then you all are thinking and wondering, you know, Hannah, well, are you going to pay this when you're sick? You've got to go to McGuire tomorrow and all of that. You don't need that extra worry or burden on you. So I think this city administration and this council needs to do something that we need to have these phone calls. And everybody knows you can call my house, 233-7382. That is my home number, 233-7382, because I want to hear from the others in my district that are calling me and, and calling others saying that they've been calling the city and no return phone calls as far as them trying to find out what happened to their tax relief. How come they're not getting it? They, they don't need that worry on them. They have enough on them. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. And actually, the Director of Finance is here, the CAO of Finance, thank you, and Ms. Judkins, and I think she would like to have a conversation with, um, with this gentleman, with Mr. Howard. Mr. Howard, this lady right here can help you. I mean, you. she's going to help you. She's with your tax relief. Behind you. And it's possible that you have tax relief and just have not um, quite Got Madam up. President. Yes, sir. Um, I'm sure Ms. Jud Judkins is going to take care of Mr. Howard, uh, but there was a two-part piece to this. One was the tax uh, and the response from the tax department. The other had to do with customer service, not just in the, uh, the finance department, but in various other departments where people complain that they're being put on hold for inordinate amounts of time Folks are being told we'll get back with you, and they're not getting back with them. And so we've got a customer service issue. And uh, um, uh, you're right, Reva. Uh, folks who are elderly, A, don't have the uh, wherewithal to manage all of that, and oftentimes don't have the knowledge to handle that kind of encumbrance. And so um, uh, I think we're going to have to really ramp up uh, and refocus on our customer service delivery uh, in various departments. I, I hear from social services on a regular basis uh, of people getting lost in that maze when the, you're talking about people with very delicate lives under very precarious situations. And uh, one 
ounce of discouragement and often they get blown away. They don't try. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. I'm not finished. But Mr. Jewell. I'll be finished in a second. Okay. Wrap it up. This is citizen comment, Mr. Jewell. But this is an issue that needs to be addressed. And I don't need to address it later when the subject is before us. <laughs> Madam I think President. I've said enough. Uh, Mr. Madam Marshall President. is here, and I think he'll, he'll address it. Uh, I just want to give my number, along with Reba's, anyone who needs additional help, uh, you can reach me at my cell number, 332-3654. 332-3654. Now I'm done. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Madam President, yes, I understand, I understand, but when you have... Mr. Hell, who comes down here with his family, and then he feels like he, and, I, and I'm glad that we have the administration that's going to take him, but it's, it's sad. And I have about some others in my district and probably all over the city that if they could find a place to park down here and get in here, they would be up here saying the same things that he's saying. It is a shame that they have another worry on them. He's been worried about this for over two weeks or three weeks, like some of the ones in my district. They can't sleep because they're scared they're going to lose their home because they can't pay it. They don't need this extra worry or burden on them when they're sick as it is. But thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Ms. Trammell, and I will be, um, I, would, I would ask finance to get back to us in terms of whether or not Mr. Howard already has tax relief. Thank you. All right, next speaker, Mr. Clerk. The next speaker is Benoni Tony Amacuzzi. Oh, excuse me. Somebody left his script here. Is that yours? Thank Please, you, don't sir. count the time. Please. <laughs> <laughs> we won't start the clock, the clock till you start. Thank you. My name has been mentioned already, Benoni Tonemakuji. Uh, I want to revisit uh, an issue that emerged on 2011. That is November 14. 2011 meeting, a good administration has a monetary system. So decisions you take, you monitor it, so that you know the impact and where you've reached those implemented, those not implemented. Honorable Reverend Trammell asked Honorable Mayor uh, uh, Dwayne Jones about an outstanding amount of $23 million. The mayor could not clarify the issue. I wanted the administration to take note of it. If they have not clarified, they should let the people know. Two, during the Hurricane Irene time, Honorable Reverend Stromer sent me an email about her concern about her district. And I made the case to President of the United States, His Excellency, Dr. Mr. President Barack Obama, my friend. And he declared the entire Virginia a disaster zone. I want to find out whether the city has received any related relief assistance from federal government and SY. Three, that uh, federal government have made a case of homelessness a reality in this city and advised the then president, my friend, His Excellency, Mr. Former President George W. Bush, to build affordable housing units here. And he started it. And when President Barack Obama took over, I re made the case, and he adopted the program. I wanted you to tell the people of the city of Richmond, where are the buildings federal government, the president, and Congress are building for the people of Richmond? $2.4 million given to the homeless people for affordable housing and prevention of homelessness in the city. City Council approved it 9-0. Nobody. Where is the money? Who are the people who benefited from it? We wanted to know. Now, at your meeting on a, that was a November, uh, October 24th, 2011, some people came, you gave them an award. They said they came to make a, 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 pancreatic, a, a pancreatic cancer research. I wanted to know who are the people 
What kind of research are they making so that it has not uh, spread in the city of Richmond? Now at Burger King, I found out that they erected a new a fountain a, a machine that the sodas and the waters come to it. And the managers even there do not know how the sodas and the water enter into the machines. And they told me it's from City Hall. Some people say it's from Coca-Cola. How did they flow into it? And how did they enter the compartment? I drank a water and I became sick. I want City of Richmond to take note. Maybe that is why my friend, Honorable Mayor, uh, and my Bloomberg was banning this type of thing in, uh, in New York. Now, the other issue is about uh, you took a decision here. In fact, I've sent a related email already. Your time is up. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, you, you will deal with the, the, the email I sent to you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. But I hope you read last week, Thursday, a free press. Yeah. First page. Thank you. National security issue. I want you to be serious. Thank you. Protect life and property. Thank God bless you. Sir. Appreciate it. Good to see you as always. Okay, next speaker. Madam President, those are all of tonight's speakers. Yeah, I believe I have uh, two more coming up on my list. One is Scott Berger. Yes. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then Michael Mack. Yes, the next speaker is Scott Berger. Thank you, Mr. Clark. Thank you. My name is Scott Berger. I'm here to speak tonight about the water rates once again. Even if you use no water, residential customers will soon have to pay $49.40 in minimum monthly service charges. These minimum water sewer service charges are the highest in the entire country. Our local residents are up to up in arms over the proposed $1 monthly service charge for the toll road, but where is the outrage over a monthly service charge approaching 50 times as large for a necessity? If you are a grandma trying to make due on Social Security, annually paying the city $592 in minimum water sewer service charges will be a significant bite out of your check and a real financial burden. Low income residents on a tight budget typically use little water, but end up paying a disproportionately higher share of the city's water budget. Why does Richmond have the most backward and regressive water sewer rate schedule of any city in the United States? As an explanation, the Department of Utilities annually trots out the old rusted pipe smith. Even if Richmond's infrastructure and water pipes are in worse decay than any city in America, which we find hard to believe, why should Richmond finance the infrastructure repair through the most regressive means, the minimum service charge? The problem is that Richmond's water rate schedule is not only an unconscionable burden to senior citizens and low-income residents struggling to pay their bills, but it also offers little in financial incentive to use less water. The city does not need to hire a consultant or to commission a study of its water sewer rates because the solution to this problem is simple. All Richmond needs to do is adopt the rate schedule used by Henrico County, which buys water from Richmond. Henrico's minimum monthly water service charge is about a third of Richmond's, and they offer a volume use discount for customers who use six uh, CCF or less of water. Richmond can receive the same total revenue from its waterworks by slashing the minimum monthly service charge, eliminating the high volume discount, and charging a premium for customers using over 6 CCF of water sewer. By giving customers genuine incentives to conserve water, Richmond will reduce the need for future treatment facilities and reduce pollutants downstream. Social Security grandmas will have significantly more disposable income to make ends meet. Richmond residents will no longer have to dread the drip, drip, drip of the minimum monthly service charges. Um, I will note that I've uh, started a, a petition that has over 600 signatures and is growing daily. And, um, you know, I, I approached this issue here about five years ago. I thought we had taken care of it. And, uh, you know, it's like, a, it's like that movie Groundhog Day. Here I am again about water rates. And uh, I'm going to continue on it. And I hope that 
council is prepared, council and the mayor are prepared to address it in a meaningful way um, rather than sloughing it off. This is not about volume. This is about the minimum service charges. And I don't want to see in the press where this is being obfuscated. This is the issue that needs to be addressed. Thank you. Scott, Madam, Madam Vice President. Yes, Ms. Trammell. Scott, I want to thank you for bringing this to our attention tonight and also all the hundreds and hundreds of emails that we've gotten. But I want everybody to know that I voted against it last year and I voted against it this year. And I think my colleagues might be looking at it a little bit different right now because this is outrageous. As you said, one month in the city of Richmond is like 80, 90, 80 to $90 a month. And in Chesterfield for two months, it's like $80. It's not fair. Especially when Chesterfield's buying water from Richmond. Buying water from us. Right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. And Mr. Tyler. Mr. Berger. Mr. Berger, before you leave, um, I think something that has not been reported uh, in, a, in a large way is the fact that during the uh, budget process, uh, council members here, we sat in this chamber and prior to all these emails, we talked with uh, DPU with regards to this issue. And we made a request of Mr. Stidell, who's director of uh, DPU, to come back to, with a study with regards to how to rectify the situation. I think everyone on council five years ago when we were sitting here talked about the goal which we are all trying to achieve. And we felt that we were going to achieve that. It didn't occur for a new, several reasons, which I'll let Mr. Stidell elaborate on. But at the end of the day, I think we as a body made a conscious decision during the budget process to request this process to go forward again so we can get it where it needs to be. Uh, I've not had one colleague come up to me and, and argue this point in the other direction. So I, I think it's a matter of timing more than anything else at this point. Uh, thank you. I uh, just realized that this is something that's affecting yeah. your citizens. Excuse me, wait a minute. Just one day. second. Excuse me. We're not going to have any back and forth here. If you want to make a statement, that's fine. Before you leave, Mr. Jewell. Uh, Mr. Berger. Yes. Um, you have been steadfast in raising this question about this water rate. Um, uh, I'm curious to know, however, how you got your $49 figure. Is that a combined water charge, minimum water charge, and sewer, minimum sewer charge, or is it just water? Uh, how did you arrive at that, that highest rate in the country figure? Well, five years ago, we had a contest, and we, the Richmond Green Party actually put out a $100 reward to anyone who could find a larger uh, water sewer monthly minimum residential water rate, combined water rate sewer. Um, there might be some place in Colorado, maybe a small town somewhere, but honestly, I don't think that any city has anything approaching Richmond's. And, and Mr. Jewell, and thank you very much, Mr. Berger. We have Mr. Seidel here. To speak well, to I'm us. not. I'm, well, I, I'm, I thought I'm not. Not. But, Mr. Joe, if we want to have, if we would like to have Mr. Berger come to a committee meeting and discuss this, that's fine. But it's not the order of this council to have a back and forth. That's it is the order of this councilman to ask a speaker a question. That's right. If I was making committees. a statement, I that's could understand you cutting me off. But I'm asking a question that I think is going to be foundational when Mr. Stidell gives us his comments. I mean, you know, you can ask me whatever I want, and I'll give you the best answer I can, but, uh, you know, we're, we're not supposed to have a back and forth here having Mr. Slidell come and give a comeback. I mean, you know, I have to question that. I want to see Mr. Berger, a response Mr. Berger, that's final. Mr. Berger, you have a citizen comment. You have every opportunity to come to citizen comment. You have every opportunity to do, go to any one of the committee meetings that we have and have this back and forth discussion with council members. Okay. This is not the right. venue for it. This is not a back and forth. I, I still have not clarified, is he counting a combined w minimum water and sewer rate or just a minimum water rate? If you look at the bills, it's combined sewer water. If you look at the mayor's budget, it's combined sewer water rate. Combined sewer minimum, and minimum water Minimum monthly rate. residential rate. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Sir. Berger. And usually, I would just say, usually we do not have um, 
somebody come to answer questions and brought up in citizen comment by Mr. Berger. You have done an excellent job in educating the public on the water rates. So I think Mr. Seidel has a couple of comments to make in terms of um, how the city is going to respond to this and how you're going to respond to the council questions. Yes, sir. Thank you. Bob Steidel, uh, Director of Utilities. I do want to correct one thing. Uh, as of July 1st, you have eliminated the declining block rate. As of July 1st, everybody in every class pays the same rate. So that, that has been eliminated by this council. Uh, five years ago when you met, you did three things. You eliminated that block rate. You changed the winter quarter for the wastewater bills so that the customers would get more, uh, more ability to use the winter quarter um, in their summer wastewater bills and not pay for their irrigation. And the third thing you did is you enacted a conservation rate that we use during uh, voluntary and mandatory uh, conservation. Uh, as we said to you in the two meetings in March, we understand that uh, when we talk about median household income when we set our rates, there's people on the upper end and the lower end of the rate. So we said to you then, and we are in the process now, is we will bring to you uh, a revised schedule of rates uh, after uh, we work with it with administration. We'll bring it to you in uh, the Finance Committee in January so you can see what they are. There will be an option of rates that will be presented to you to be able to recover the revenue, and that's what you can use going forward with the citizen discussion for the upcoming biennial budget period and as we are going to set the rates for 14 and 15. Um, when it comes to the counties, we, 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 we can't compare each other. We're very, very different. In the wastewater side, we have flood walls and canals that we, that we take care of where the counties don't. On the water side, we have reservoirs and large tanks that the counties don't have those same kind of tanks or those same numbers. The Richmond water plant was built in the 40s. Uh, the Henrico water plant was built in 2002. Now, there's a lot of differences as to why things are the way they are. The things that are constant between all of us is what we pay for our people, power, and chemicals, and that's the commodity charge that we charge. The base charge, the charge that uh, Mr. Berger was referring to, is how we recover the capital cost, the cost of the fire protection system, the cost of the combined sewer system. These, these are what we believe are, are good financial decisions to be made um, for the health and vitality of, of the, uh, the city. But we'll look at different options and bring those to you, including changes in the base rate. We want to look at lifeline rates. We want to look at low income rates. We want to look at water conservation rates, inclining block rates. But we do this every five years because it makes sense to do it every five years as a way of letting the rates be properly absorbed throughout the time. We've raised the rates 60 percent on the commercial and the industrial class. That's a lot to ask during the last five years. And at this time, we're at the end of that process and we want to reevaluate re what we should be doing going forward. Uh, we have heard what you have said. We have heard what Mr. Berger, we've heard what other people have said. And we want to bring you back options, but at the same time, we also want to understand that water is very valuable. And we believe at this point we still don't pay the full value of what we deliver every day. Every day you get water delivered to your house, every day you get sewage taken away. You don't have to do anything about it. It comes and it goes. During the last power outage, everybody had water. During the power outage before that, everybody had water. It's, it's, it's something that we deliver to you every day that you do not have to take care of yourself, and we believe we bring you a, a quality rate. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Julie, you have a question? Mr. Stadel. Yes, you might have a couple of questions. Thank you. Uh, uh, I, I should hope that um, uh, uh, your reviews, I'm sure, will, are going to be helpful. Uh, but I think we finally, uh, uh, it needs to come down to getting a complete comprehensive analysis on, on cost because I'm not sure we're all counting apples and apples. Number one, we at least got to start with a baseline of truth. Henrico County has its own water supply, does it not? Its own water treatment plant. Its own water treatment plant. Are they not billing their customers in the county? I'm sorry, sir. Say, are they billing their customers in yes, the county? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, they're no longer buying water from Richmond City. No, they also buy water from Richmond. To be able to meet their demand, they buy water from. We wholesale water to them. They buy it and they resell it. And they also make their own water, and then they sell that water too. Exacto mundo. And so there's part of the water they produce is self-generated from the county. 
Correct, sir. Another part uh, is from the city. We don't know what that mix is. I have no idea what that ratio is. Uh, the other point, though, is that every year uh, or thereabouts, uh, we, we get um, uh, a COLA. Cost of living, uh, it's not COLA, it's not, what am I trying to say? Uh, uh, you guys remunerate the city with surplus funds or a percentage of funds surplus. Is that correct? What, are you, what am I trying to call that? We, we make you a pilot payment. Pilot, pilot and not the COLA, it's a pilot. Um, and so uh, does that not have to be figured in? I mean, while we're charging X number per CCF, uh, at the end of the day, there's a profit that's redistributed back to the city uh, in, in terms of services. And so that should be a part of the analysis. Well, that, that, that's, that is set in charter as to how much the pilot payment is back to the city. From We, we operate like we were a for-profit business as if we were a, a private entity, and it is allowable that the city can't expect to be receiving some funding back from, from the operation of the... Well, again, if it's profit, it's coming from the taxpayer or the ratepayer, and therefore uh, it should be calculated in a way that uh, it addresses the actual uh, rate at some point. Mm -hmm. And then we need to uh, compare apples and apples. Henrico County charges profits. I've heard $10,000 per unit, per housing unit. Uh, they've got tap fees, highly expensive tap fees that they charge the homeowner or the builder. We don't do that in the city. The money, we need to count all the money. Well, they charge. So, in I don't, I'm not prepared oh, with Mr. Uh, uh, with Mr. Burgers based on some contests. Uh, I'm not sure that we're comparing apples and apples and where you've got old cities like ours that's got water, sewer, uh, uh, what do you call it, combined water and sewer when other places, newer, younger, they don't have that problem. Uh, and so uh, we need a full analysis of this problem and not just an offhanded comparison. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Ms. Trammell? Thank you, Madam President. Um, you were talking about infrastructure and things like that. For the past five years, that's why our, our rates have been going up and up, because we have to take care of the infrastructure and the pipes and all of that. Okay, we're, the taxpayers in the city of Richmond are the ones that use the water. They're the ones that's paying for that, but yet though Chesterfield is benefiting from it because they get our water. So they're not paying for the infrastructure in the city as we're paying, and they're benefiting from us when their water bills are cheaper for two months than what some of ours is. I mean, it's higher in one month bills in the city than it is in Chesterfield. And that's what so many people are, are screaming and hollering about. Well, Ch Chesterfield County, under their contract with us, pays for the infrastructure in the city of Richmond that they use. So we bill them for their percentage share, their allocation of the infrastructure it takes us to take water and move it from the city of Richmond and distribute it into Chesterfield County. Again, we wholesale. So we provide them one commodity, and it's up to them to decide how much they want to charge their own citizens for it. I know, but it's pretty bad when you got somebody in Chesterfield that's got six children and a husband and wife and they have a big garden and they have cars and trucks that they wash once a week or every day water the garden and their water bill is cheaper than what ours is for one month in the city their water bill is every two months not every month mm -hmm. and that's what we're having an issue with i'd like to see what what we charge them chestville and Himrico. yes ma'am and again they're they're 40-year wholesale contracts that we have uh, we, we we change it every year uh, to reflect what the costs are of the current year, and they're charged, they're charged the current cost just like we charge city, city residents. All right, thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Appreciate Madam it. Madam President. Yes, sir. Thank you. I just had one question here. Mr. Stoddell, you had indicated that 
the rates for the commercial users or the high-end users have gone up 20%, 60% in the past five years, whereas for the residential uh, customers, that's much less than that. It's been 9%. I'm sorry? 9% the last 9%. five years. So when we had this discussion five years ago, it was to transfer uh, the cost from the high-end commercial users to, one, promote conservation, but two, uh, relieve the burden of the minimum payment to the degree that we could. Uh, and I thought I heard you say in March that we had reached parity on that to where now we do have the option of, of actually lowering this payment. Uh, we didn't want to overnight have the water bills for the businesses in the city to go up 300 uh, percent. And so we're doing this as as prudently as possible to, well, prudently in order not to cause a shock to the businesses. However, you're saying that this January we will have the option of, of getting these numbers actually down. Yes, sir. Uh, the $49. But by charter, I have to propose to you that we cover debt coverage for the utility of the bond covenants and to be able to get the equity and rate of return. I have to propose that to you. I have, I have no latitude in, in charter and in code, but I can give you options as to how to make that happen. Okay. Well, great. I think we, um, it's unfair to say that nothing has happened, I believe, and I appreciate that we're not getting there as fast as, as, uh, as we wanted and the costs are going up. And uh, I, I believe that as I said, that I'm not sure that it's completely fair to say that we haven't done anything. We have, as you said, transferred some of these costs. Do we still offer, uh, and I, I understood that we were eliminating the, uh, the higher use or the more you use, the more you save, uh, that is no longer in the system. As of July 1st of this year, that is now eliminated, yes sir. Okay, so we brought that to parity now that there's, there is a, an incentive to conserve or certainly not an, in, not an incentive to continue to use more water. Okay, I just wanted to get all of that out there. Thank you. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Helbert, and thank you. I'm sure I'll be speaking with you yes, in the near future. Okay. Michael Mack. Mr. Clerk, was that our next speaker? Yeah, the next speaker is Michael Mack. Okay. All right, th at this time, it doesn't look like Mr. Mack is here. I believe he's the last. At this time, Mr. Clerk, could we have, do we have any motions to amend and continue? Madam President, I have one motion to amend and continue. And that is for item number six, which is thirteen Exchange Alley, thirteen twenty East Carey Street, fourteen twenty South Fourteenth Street, twenty six Carey Street, of a private alley and a portion of Virginia Street, for the purposes of waiving loading requirements and. To that paper is this fall to amend ordinance 2012 03, page 5, line 1, after the letter L, insert the text valet parking shall be provided for the hotel from 7 a.m. to 12 a.m. The approval of the city traffic engineer shall be required for the designation of the on street waiting and loading area for such valet parking. The owner of the property shall ensure or shall cause the hotel operator to ensure that the operation of the hotel does not result in the blockage of traffic lanes on the streets abutting the property. Page 5, line 6, at the beginning of the line, insert the letter M. Page 5, line 8, at the beginning of the line, delete the letter M and insert the letter N. Page 5, line 10, at the beginning of the line, delete the letter O. Page 515 of the line, delete the letter O, and insert six line at the beginning of the letter P. The letter I will need a motion to amend the paper 
as presented. Mr. Samuels, make that motion. So moved, Madam Clerk. Council is voting on Councilman Samuels' motion to amend item number six, ordinance 2012-103. Yeah, before we Excuse me, yes, start sir, the vote, Mr. Tyler. I need to let folks know that I have a conflict of interest on this on this paper and will not be voting on it. Okay. Thank you. On 2012-103. Uh, number six. Number six. And do you have a conflict on number five also? Yes, ma'am, but I was going to wait to tell that okay. a little later. <laughs> All right. Okay, Madam Clerk. <clears throat> Council is voting on Councilman Samuel's motion to amend item number six, ordinance 2012-103, to the July 23rd meeting as stated. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. That paper has been amended and continued to July 23, 2012. Thank you, Mr. The send agenda items for this evening are as follows. This number 22. to the B-5 Central Business District. Item five, ordinance number 2012-102 to close to public use and travel, a portion of Virginia Street located between East Carey Street and Exchange Alley, conditioned upon the dedication to the city of the property for alley purposes and for an easement over the property for, for sidewalk purposes. Item seven, ordinance number 2012-107, to amend the pay plan to include the classification of social services worker and social services worker supervisor. Item eight, ordinance number 2012-108, to amend the pay plan to include the classification of surveillance officer and electronic monitoring program supervisor. Item nine, ordinance number 2012-139, to dedicate to declare the public necessity for the for and authorize the acquisition of 501 North 7th Street and 1310D East Canal Street for the purpose of public parking. Item 10, ordinance number 2012-140, to declare that a public necessity acquisition of a temporary easement on 2819 Richmond Henrico Turnpike for the purpose for the public purpose of allowing allowing temporary access and use of the property to construct phase two of the Canal Creek bicycle and pedestrian RS69 the sustainability plan for the city. That concludes the consent agenda for this evening. wish to speak in favor of any item on the consent agenda? Hi, my name is Chris. I'm going to be speaking in opposition of uh, 103, 108, and uh, interest. Construction kickbacks, so that my three and two. Um, as far as number eight, there's not really much information given uh, to include the classifications of surveillance officer and electronic monitoring program, but I'm opposed to any uh, violations of the Fourth Amendment, and that includes most. Uh, 
so-called electronic monitoring and uh, um, as I've stated before, uh, um, it, it seems to be uh, the people who are making these rule electronically monitored, it seems to be um, uh, those who are violating the Constitution and putting forward uh, statutory law which violates the Constitution. And as far as sustainability, I don't know what the RVA Green Program for Sustainability is, but uh, I know about the, uh, um, the environmental record of this city council and uh, um, uh, we talk talked about what and there was the James knows how much it costs the taxpayer to, to clean, but uh, we have a damaged nuclear power plant that we're in the uh, fallout zone for, and I don't hear anybody on city council addressing that. So I can assume their sustainability plan is um, greenwashing and uh, I don't know taking people's rights away or destroying the planet while pretending to uh, protect it. So anyways, uh, like, I, like I usually say, I'm, I'm opposed to anything this body does and it really has no legitimate authority and is criminal in nature and I thank you very much for your time. Thank you, sir. We appreciate your comments. Hmm. All right, I'm bringing it back to council for, is there anybody else in opposition? Okay, back to council Madam for President, discussion. Yes, sir. Once again, I need to let everyone know that 2012-102, uh, I have a conflict of interest <laughs> and will be removing myself from the discussion and vote. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Any other discussion on the consent agenda? Call the question, Mr. Clerk. Council is voting on tonight's consent agenda. Aye. Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Oh, but uh, I, for all except for the one I've so noted, I have a conflict. President Graziano? Aye. Those papers has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clark. Mr. Clark, at this time, do we have any expedited resolutions? Madam President, we have two. We'll start with item num resolution number 2012-R100 to approve an expenditure in the amount of $3,500 from the council district funds for the 7th district to make a gift to the Fan Free Clinic for its Sister Speak Camp program. I will need a motion for expedited consideration of that. Could be, Madam Clerk, could we take both of those expedited papers together to um, vote on whether to expedite the two of them? Sure. Thanks. The next is resolution number 2012-R101. That's to approve an expenditure in the amount of $2,000 from the council district funds for the 7th district to make a donation to the east District Family Resource Center for the annual Camp Diva Date with Dad Dinner and Dance to be held on March 2013, held in March 2013. I will need a motion for expedited consideration of those papers. Councilwoman Newbell, will you make that motion? So moved, Madam Clerk. Council is voting on Councilwoman Newbell's motion for expedited consideration of those papers as stated. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those papers are before you for consideration. Thank you, Madam Clerk. So I think we'll take those two papers together. Is there anyone? Um, in the audience who wishes to speak in favor of either of those papers in opposition back to the council for discussion call the question madam clerk council is voting on resolution number 2012-r101 and resolution 2012-r100 as stated mr connor 
Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those papers have been adopted. Thank you. Uh, at this time, may we have the approval of the minutes? Minutes for approval this evening. Minutes held on Monday, June 25th at 3 p.m. The formal meeting held on June 25th at 6 p.m. I need a motion to approve those minutes. Um, Vice President Robinson, will you make that motion? So, Madam Clerk. Now, council is voting on Vice President mm -hmm. Robinson's motion to approve the minutes as read. Mr. Connor? Aye. Mr. Samuels? Aye. Mr. Hilbert? Aye. Vice President Robertson? Aye. Mr. Jewell? Aye. Ms. Newbill? Aye. Ms. Trammell? Aye. Mr. Tyler? Aye. President Graziano? Aye. Those minutes has been adopted. Thank you, Madam Clerk. This time we're going to have uh, reports and announcements. Start with Mr. Connor. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Uh, first of all, we got to clean up on the 21st, Saturday the 21st at 8 a.m. We meet at 5515 Bryce Lane. Um, <clears throat> I'll give you a heads up a little bit. We're going to be off in August, so we will not be a clean up in August or a district meeting. The land use meeting uh, meets on the 17th. That's Tuesday at 3 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be talking about the SPCA MOU that was mentioned in the paper today. We'll be having presentations on that. Also on the fleet and also emergency management will be there to talk about how we did this last time as compared to uh, the things that were going on with Irene. So I think they've done a lot of improvement, but I'm sure we got some things we need to work on as well. The uh, district meeting is on the 24th. Tuesday the 24th starts at 5 o'clock at 5515 Bryce Lane as well. Um, and Mrs. Turner's uh, viewing, I, I will give you a little bit of information on that now because I know a lot of folks really don't have that. There will be a viewing held on Friday, July 13th from 6 to 7 p.m. at the Giles Funeral Home located at 2100 Fairmount Avenue in, in Richmond. Telephone number there is 649- 0377. <clears throat> Her service will be held on Saturday, July 14th at 11 a.m. at Redeemer Lutheran Church located at 9400 Red Bridge Road in northern Chesterfield County. The telephone number there is 272-7973. Madam Vice President, Mr. Connor, before you go farther, um, the viewing on Friday at Child's <coughs> Uh, funeral home. I think you said Giles. Child's. Child's. Child's funeral home. It's Child's. Child's on yeah. Fairmount Avenue. Yeah, on Fairmount yes. Avenue. Uh -huh. Yeah. Just a correct. Okay. And the and the service will be held on this next Saturday, the 14th, at 11 a.m. at Redeemer Lutheran Church. Okay. And that's located at 9400 Red Bridge Road in northern Chesterfield. Telephone number there. Is two seven two seven nine seven three, and that concludes my my. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Connor, Mr. Samuels. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I'll try to keep this very brief. If you still have problems from the storm, be it debris that needs to be picked up, or if there is a problem with the tree and there's a question if it's a city tree or somebody's uh, a residence's tree, give me a call and let me know. You can reach me at my office, 646-6532, or on my cell phone, 690-0898. You can also catch up with me on Facebook or via the internet at charlesrsamuels.com. Secondly, the second district has been working on parking issues of all shapes and sizes and we've been working hard on them not only from the council standpoint but also I want to thank the administration for the work they have put in as well as the Fan District Association and the West Gray Street Association who have hosted meetings and really put hours of work into finding new ways to help with 
the parking problem. And I'm excited that people are so willing to give of their time to work on these issues that benefit the whole community. I want to thank the Fan District Association, the West Grace Street Association, and the administration for being easy to work with on a difficult problem. Thank you, Mr. Samuels. Mr. Hilbert. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I feel like I'd be remiss if I didn't also uh, say a little something about Ms. Turner. She was a wonderful woman. It's uh, indeed a, a loss for the region uh, as well. And uh, it would be, uh, she was a, uh, a role model certainly for regional cooperation. Sounds like she's uh, uh, doing that. Uh, in her passing as well, having the viewing in the city of Richmond and having uh, her funeral in Chesterfield County. She's just a wonderful woman, uh, and we were glad to and fortunate to, to know her. Uh, the uh, next Health, Human Services, and Education Committee meeting is uh, next Wednesday, July the 18th. We'll receive a report from the Department of Social Services on Child Protective uh, Services cases. and. Uh, get some information. We've requested some uh, in-depth uh, information regarding uh, referrals to CPS and their ultimate uh, outcome. We're going to get a follow-up report on the computer issues. We heard from uh, various Richmond Public School students about the availability of computers built at the public library and in their schools, and uh, we're going to get an update on how that is progressing towards a more positive outcome. And finally, we're going to get an update on homeless uh, services uh, with regard to uh, the uh, cooling and warming shelters and what will be the, uh, the policy in trying to address those issues during this very uh, hot summer. Uh, again, as Mr. Samuel said, we're, uh, please uh, give us a call uh, regarding any uh, storm-related issues, particularly with removal of debris. Uh, I would suggest that in the beginning of 311 so that uh, we will have record and be able to track uh, this as to, to where a matter is and I think we can uh, expedite your situation if there's something in the system already and we're making a request uh, from my office for a follow-up. So uh, would ask that everyone call 311 uh, first and then we can uh, certainly follow up if you're not getting the action that, uh, that you deserve. Uh, this has been a massive undertaking, uh, certainly from Dominion Power, and uh, we appreciate their efforts, but also uh, our own Department of uh, Public Utilities and, uh, and Public Works, so we thank them uh, for our work. I'm going to give you the Dominion Power number is 866-366-4357. That is, if you're if your phone is working, if not, then if you could, if your mobile phone is working, that's the number to report a, uh, a power outage. The next district meeting uh, will be held uh, the following Wednesday, July the 25th at Pine Camp. Uh, that's at 4901 Oldbrook Road at 6 o'clock. Uh, joining us will be the uh, Richmond Police to discuss uh, crime statistics and the upcoming national night out in the month of August. We'll also get a presentation on being prepared for uh, a, turn, a tornado and or hurricane. And uh, finally, we'll uh, introduce the new director of the Northside Branch Library, uh, and they will uh, have a chance to speak with us and hear your concerns. Uh, the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the current issue of the district newsletter uh, has been mailed as of uh, last week, so you should be receiving those. If you have not received one and you would like to do so, please call Lisa Towns at 646-6055 and she can get a copy uh, to you and make sure that our database is, uh, is updated. Uh, we're also, excuse me, we also send out periodic emails uh, keeping you up to date on uh, information both within the city and, uh, excuse me, within the district and the city as a whole. If you want to be included on those announcements, please call Ms. Towns. Again, her number is 646-6055, or you can email her at crit, excuse me, at lisa.towns, T-O-W-N-E-S, at richmondgov.com. Uh, and, of course, your email information will be kept confidential. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. Mr. Jewell? 
Oh, I did a switcheroo tonight. You can uh, never know which way I'm going, Mr. Jewell. Well, thank you, Madam President. I, uh, I just want to say, first of all, that, that uh, um, to the public that I, I'm just overwhelmed uh, with joy that we got a better response after this awful storm this, this last time around. Uh, not only from uh, Dominion, but from the city. Because that small comfort to someone who still has a, a tree sitting on their house. Uh, uh, and so, uh, but the, uh, uh, the, the Dominion was extremely responsive. Uh, the city was very quick at removing blockage from the streets. Um, and uh, I thought this was a heck of a, Heck of a response. During the hurricane, we had four, five, six days warning. We knew it was coming. I don't think anybody knew this one was coming. Uh, and so, uh, but that the response was as good as it was. It was amazing. Um, I am having a uh, district meeting, fifth district meeting, tomorrow night. Tomorrow, Tuesday night at 6 p.m., we alternate on each side of the river since the 5th District sort of brackets both sides of the river. We'll be meeting at Southside Plaza at the Southside Community uh, Center. Um, um, and uh, we hope to have our Richmond police officers there to give us a report from the 2nd and the 3rd precincts, uh, as well as uh, public works would be there. Anyone who still has outstanding storm-related issues to come and let us know what you um, uh, And um, there was, oh, uh, there is road work going on, paving going on in Main Mountain neighborhood. It's a little weird. Anyone having problems trying to understand what's going on over there, uh, please bring your concerns to that meeting. Uh, I understand that just last week, week before last, the tax assessment notices went out. Uh, we send notices twice a year now, not just once a year. Uh, and I urge, usually as a rule of thumb, if your assessment has unexplainably increased 7% or more, then you may want to consider an appeal. Please call our offices if that's uh, the case. If you need help, uh, Ms. Young's number is 646-5724 here at the office, or you can reach me by cell at 332-3654. Um, that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Jewell. Ms. Ms. Newell. Thank you, Madam President. I would like to uh, first just simply say thank you to Dominion Power and all of the city agencies, Department of Public Works, DPU, uh, EMS administration, and others who worked uh, long hours to speedily restore the recent storm-related uh, power outage throughout our city. And uh, I know that there are still a few out, but they're working diligently to uh, have those come back on. Uh, this is an early announcement. Uh, we will not have a district meeting in the month of July, but I want to uh, early invite all of the uh, residents of the 7th District to come out to our uh, district-wide national night out celebration on Tuesday, August 7th from 5 to 8 p.m. Uh, at uh, 25th and Fairmount Avenues. This is a, a district-wide national night out celebration that uh, civic associations and other organizations throughout the district have been working diligently on to ensure that it's an extraordinary event providing food, fun, entertainment, uh, as well as information, public safety, health, and re community resource information for all. So again, that will be a district-wide. And last year it was uh, one of the largest in the city with all, um, not all, but the uh, good number of the civic associations coming together. Uh, and that will be Tuesday, August 7th from eight, 5 to 8 p.m. at 25th and Fairmount Avenue. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ms. Trammell. Thank you, Madam President. Mr. Mayor, the Richmond Times-Dispatch is right. 
silence is not golden. Mr. Mayor, in speaking as Chairperson of Public Safety, I would like to know who held up the promotion of our Richmond police officers and why? Did you know that this hurts the morale of our entire police force? And now this has become a public safety issue. Let's remember that promotions are an important part of attracting and maintaining good qualified police officers in our city. These promotions are the responsibility of our police chief, our police chief, Brian Norwood, and no one else no one else, including you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to have an answer to my questions at my next public safety meeting on Monday, July the 16th. Thank you. Last Friday and Saturday, we were hit hard with the storm, bad storms, especially in our 8th district, and I know some other districts got hit pretty hard, too. I'd like to thank Dr. Carlin Graham, Dr. Anthony McLean, Tammy Harley, and Mr. Marshall for their, phone, for their phone calls and their emails. I'd also like to thank Christy Morton from the governor's office who had emailed me and I forwarded the email to Lou Ali who forwarded it to my colleagues to let them know how bad the storm was. As Marty Jewell has said and some other colleagues, yes, this was a wake up, I think, from the last storm that we had. Things went a lot smoothly this time because we were in touch with some of the key people like Anthony McLean and Dr. Carlin Graham. I want to thank them for all the emails and thank them for taking the time to call me personally and Mr. Marshall and Tammy Harley for all that they did. Um, I know this was very difficult for our seniors, our children, and the adults without power for over six days, especially over there on Albany Avenue in the Blackwell area and the seniors over there at the Forest Haven Apartments who had no, no air condition. I think one side did, the other side didn't. So that was pretty, pretty rough for those seniors. Also, um, I want to thank Keith Andes and Chip Decker for returning my phone call when I found out Sunday afternoon from Anthony McLean and Dr. Carlin Graham that there was going to be ice delivered at station, let me see, station 22 and station 13. I was kind of upset when I made the phone calls to them because I did not understand why Station 21, Fire Station 21 on Jefferson Davis was not going to receive the ice. After some phone calls that Keith Andy and Chip Decker made, Nancy Hall, Laura Nunley, and Derek Andes, they were able to make this happen. At Station 21, we were able to get ice by 12 o'clock Monday. And with that, the total amounts that we had at Fire Station 13, which is at 411 East Commerce Road, there was a total of a total bags, 1,757 bags. They also helped load up people's cars so that they could have the ice. Fire Station 21, which is 2505 Jefferson Davis Highway, total bags, 1,162 bags. So that was a total for all three fire stations, 4,577 bags. I like to thank Dominion Power and the Red Cross that was able to get these track and trailers over there with the ice. And also, the ice was delivered over there to 21 by, in coolers because they could not get the, um, the track and trailer over there. But again, this is us working together. And as I have said many, many times, who knows our districts better than the council person that is representing that district? So thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I know those seniors were very appreciative for the fire department, police working together, Major Steve Drew calling to check on the residents and the seniors, our captain from 2nd, um, Harvey Powers, Captain Sybil Elamine from Forrest, with um, Lieutenant John Beasley, Lieutenant Angie Green, who was out there in the districts helping people. So I say thank you all for all your hard work. And also, I know some people say, what, why do they need ice? Well, you know what? The seniors taught me something. You know what they were doing with the ice? They had little pans. They would take the ice because most of them had to sit outside because it was so hot in the, in the apartments, all that, you couldn't stand it. They put the ice in the pan so they could put their feet in it to cool their body down. So that's why we need ice. And also, people were telling me if they would have had ice that Saturday, maybe some of them could have had their coolers ready and put the ice in it so they could have saved some of their food and some of their medicine. So that's why it's important to have the ice maybe delivered 
right away as soon as possible because people don't realize the city of Richmond does not reimburse people for their food and neither does the manufacturer. You must have homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance to get reimbursed for your food. Um, our next meeting is going to be July the 19th. That's the third Thursday, July 19th at the satellite. Um, we're going to have Linda Brody Myers there to speak about some senior programs and also GRTC. Also, Cord Dickerson is going to be there to talk to us about the 311 and 211. And also, we're going to see if we can get Mark Bridgman there to talk to us about some code enforcement issues. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oh, yes, my fire. I forgot. Okay, don't forget yes, that. Don't forget I'm that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Yes, sir. <laughs> this right here, and let me, yeah, I know. No, I okay, this right here is your free smoke alarm. I have been telling so many people at all the meetings, if you call 646-1526, that's 646-1526, these firefighters will come to your house. They will install this smoke alarm for you for free. And if the smoke alarm is beeping, Call them or go to the nearest fire station. They will set up an appointment. They'll come to your house, your apartment, and they will put this up for you. Or they'll give you a battery to go. They'll put the battery in your smoke alarm. All you got to do is make that call, 646-1526. These smoke alarms do save your life. They save your home. They save your pets. And just remember, if there's a fire, get out as soon as possible. Let those firefighters, those men and women, put the fire out because they know how to do their job. And again, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Amal. Mr. Tyler? Thank you, Madam President. On Tuesday, July 24th at 6.30 p.m. at Mary Mumford, there'll be a first district meeting. Uh, and at that meeting, I'm hoping to have two conversations, and I'm trying to get folks from the city administration to join in these conversations. The first one is City Stadium. And with regards to the Redskin development to see what, what's going on, if the stadium is going to be used, how would it would be used, and what impact it would have on the, on the nearby community. Uh, the second one is, is that we have a, a special use permit in the first district at the corner of Libby and Grove, and it's a BP station that's being looked at to be converted to a mixed use project, and I'm hoping that we will have someone from planning development in review to join me as we discuss this project. Um, again, the meeting's at 6.30 p.m. on Tuesday, July 24th at Mary Munford. Uh, in closing, I, I want to say that um, there are many times people come up to you and they, they look at you and they say, why are, you on, why are you on city council? And I can't tell folks the number of times because of folks like Mrs. Ruby Turner. Um, she, five and a half years ago, I had the pleasure of meeting her for the first time, sitting in that seat uh, on the front row. And I hope one day we'll put a plaque uh, to recognize that seat in her behalf. Um, she was such an inspiration. She, soft voice, but boy, did she carry a big message in a big way. And I just wish we had 20 of her sitting in this community. Uh, I have never met someone so inspirational and and so um, full of life. Um, I tell f folks uh, that um, I've heard many people talk about the witness witnessing to the light, and I must say she did witness to the light, and it's a light that I will never forget. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Mr. Robertson. Thank you. Madam President, um, I'd just like to first of all echo what uh, Mr. Tyler just said about Ms. Ruby Turner. Um, it's amazing how many people I meet that always ask me, who is that lady that sits there, um, you know, a TV audience that sit at home and watch us? And um, they always ask about her, and they always um, ask with a sense of, um, wonder and amazement because even just from the view of those that see her on TV, they sense the passion that she has for what's going on in city government and her dedication and, and, and commitment. So it's always been a pleasure for me to tell people the little that I have known about Ms. Turner, and uh, certainly she's going to be missed, and she was missed tonight. Um, you can always hear her say God 
distinctly when we say the Pledge of Allegiance, and um, it speaks to her faith, and it speaks to her commitment to um, to the works that she has done. So we appreciate uh, the time that she was with us, uh, and we send our regards to the family. For the district, um, I have mentioned at the last couple of meetings that we are having a foreclosure uh, prevention workshop. Uh, that will be this week, Thursday, July the 12th. It's going to be held at the Bird Park Roundhouse from 6.30 to 8. Uh, we've sent um, the brochure to all of my colleagues and asked if their liaisons would send them out. We want to make sure that we get this information out. Um, we still have a significant large number of persons that um, in stages of foreclosure or have concerns about whether or not they can make their mortgage payments. There are wonderful services that are out there that can help people. And so it's very important that we get the message out to have people to come. There will be opportunities where they can get questions answered. And if they want to talk specifically about their personal situation, and we know they would want to share that in a public meeting, there will be counselors there from Housing Opportunities Made Equal and other partners that are in this work that can talk to people one-on-one -on -one and, and address their concerns. So I really want to stress the significance of that. Uh, we also will be talking about other issues as it relates to foreclosures, how it's impacting real estate values in the city, what are the resale values, and their impact that we anticipate that they will have as it relates to assessment values. Uh, we also will be providing opportunities for tenants because in lots of cases, the persons who live in rental housing that may be foreclosed on may not get that notice because it goes to the property owner. And so they are caught off guard when the property that they are living in is foreclosed, but there are certain laws and certain things that they can take uh, into account to protect them as it relates to their, their rents and their places where they're living. So we're asking not only for the homeowners, but also tenants to come out uh, and find out um, this information as it relates to foreclosure and foreclosure prevention in the city of Richmond. So that's Thursday night again, July 12th, 6.30 to 8 at the Bird Park Roundhouse, 800 South Davis Street. It's right in the middle of Bird Park. Um, also, we are having, um, because of this meeting, I am not going to be having a uh, town meeting, which would have normally been held on Saturday. Um, so there will not be a town meeting for the 6th District for the month of July. Uh, we're asking everyone to come to a foreclosure prevention meeting that will be held on Thursday night. And I'm also happy to announce that the Botten Heights Community Association is reconvening. Um, they have not had um, a civic association organization in operation for some time. If you all remember uh, Al Raff um, Harris that was with us, um, did a marvelous job leading the civic association and so that's been a, quite a void, uh, but they have reconvened and they will be having their first meeting on Wednesday, July the 18th, 6.30 to 7.30 at Bodden Heights Community Association meeting at the um, Police Academy building, 800, no, I'm sorry, at the Partnership for Families uh, on North Side, 800 West Graham Road. And also, um, I am happy to uh, announce that as a part of the introductory papers that will be made tonight, we have uh, spent, uh, we've had two meetings with stakeholders, um, homeowners, um, developers, um, other activist groups that are interested in affordable housing, we have legislation that will be introduced tonight, and uh, we hope that you would take time to review that and make sure that we can move forward with putting the Affordable Housing Trust Fund in place, as well as there's a piece of legislation on derelict structures that I would like for you all to also pay close attention to. And 
Likewise, like my colleagues have said, if there's debris that has not been picked up in the 6th District, uh, please call our office, 646-7964. Let us know where it is and the address. I want to thank Dominion and the city for the wonderful job that they have done and ask the citizens to continue to work with us and let us know where there may be still debris that needs to be picked up in the district. Thank you very much, Madam President. Uh, Madam President. If I could just add one quick thing here. I forgot to mention. Uh, now we are going to have, we've had all the announcements except for mine. Well, but now we're going to go to the PS okay. announcements. Thank you. But before UPS, okay. UPS over there. Okay. Uh, I thank was, you, Madam President. <laughs> Madam President, thank you. Uh, you see, if you go over and ask her nicely, you get to go first. Okay. Uh, Duly noted. Duly noted. Uh, and I, in all seriousness, I f forgot to mention the Richmond City Council GRT GRTC and Transit Study Task Force is holding a meeting this Thursday at 4 o'clock, and it's 4 to 6 p.m., and it will be at uh, Richmond Main Street Station in the Office of Economic Development on the third floor in the large conference room. We will be receiving reports from the subcommittees that have been working on this task force uh, for the last month with regards to their ideas and concepts. So I look forward to anyone joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tyler. Wait, the PS over here is next, and then you get a PS. Go ahead, Mr. Hilbert. Thank you, uh, President Graziano. I just wanted to, uh, to thank personally uh, Charlotte Davis over at uh, Lincoln Muse Apartments for uh, giving me a call and letting me know about their power outage. Uh, and I want to thank the Better Housing Coalition for what they did of creating a cooling shelter, uh, bringing a generator over there, and for the Richmond uh, police for uh, bringing some lights over there, uh, attempting to in a, in a difficult situation with the storm. So uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't thank those folks for uh, contacting me and for their good work in the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilbert. Ms. Trammell, on the PS mode. Thank you, Madam President. I, too, wanted to say something about Ms. Ruby Turner because I also served on a board with her with Citizens Against Gun Violence. And she's definitely going to be missed because she worked so well with the community, with the police, everywhere, state police, Prince George, every, I mean, just everywhere, Chesterfield, Henrico City. <coughs> she's going to definitely be missed because she just, as um, Bruce said, when you saw her sitting in the audience, she just had a glow about her. and. You could just feel that she's a wonderful person. And like I said, I, I can remember some of the phone calls that we had in reference to um, city council and, and, and to the city, the district, and things like that. You could call Ruby anytime, and she always had good advice. And she was always, always up and honest with you, no matter what. She would always be honest with you. So she's going to definitely be missed. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Trammell. Uh, I just have a couple of announcements along with everyone else in Beery. Sorry about the passing of Miss Ruby Turner and certainly will miss seeing, seeing her sitting in her favorite spot right in front of council. Um, just so everybody knows, we're sending a letter to her family expressing the condolences of um, council and uh, just she will be missed by all of us. Uh, the other thing that I want to mention, um, we did have those power outages and storms um, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday, Monday. I just want to thank Tuesday. I just want to thank Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> I just want to thank all of the Dominion workers and the city workers we who were out. I know Dominion, they had workers working 12, 14-hour shifts, and our city workers were out there also. And I just want to thank all those people who were doing their job trying to get us our roads open and our lights back on. So thank you. And with that, oh, and also don't forget the Farmer's Market, Forest Hill Park. Uh, tomatoes are in, corn is in, peppers are in, and there's music, tacos, eat, and just have a good time. Uh, at this time, I would like to have the introduction of the papers, Madam Clerk, Mr. Clerk. Yes, Madam President, the introductory papers for this evening are as follows. Ordinance number 2012-145 to authorize the CAO to execute an amendment to project development and administration agreement between the city and the Virginia Department of Transportation for the purpose of providing additional funding 
for the Hull Street Passenger Station project. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's Public Hearing, July 23rd. Ordinance 2012-146 to authorize the CAO to accept $135,000 from the Virginia Department of Transportation for the purpose of making improvements to the former Hull Street Station located at the intersection of First Street and Hull Street. Council's Planning Commission, July 7, 16th. Council's Public Hearing Date, July 23rd. Ordinance 2012-145 to authorize the CAO to execute a supplemental agreement between the City and the Old Dominion Chapter National Railroad Historic Society for the purpose of modifying the party agreement to provide an additional $135,000 to Virginia Department of Transportation funding for the Hull Street Passenger Station Project. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 16th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance 2012-148 to authorize the CAO to execute the Economic Development First Revolving Loan Tranche 2 Corporation Agreement between the City and the Economic Development Authority for the City of Richmond for the purpose of administering a loan program fund with the Section 108 loan of $10,125,000 from the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Council's Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, July 19th. Council's Public Hearing Date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-149 to authorize the CAO to accept $131,296.55 from the State Board of Election for the purpose of reimbursing the city for costs incurred in conducting the 2012 Republican Party presidential primary election. Council's Finance and Economic Development Standing Committee, July 19th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-150 to authorize the CAO to execute a lease of property by the City of Richmond Agreement between the City as Leesor and Lee Cement Company LLC as Lee with for the purpose of allowing Lee Cement Company LLC to use the property known as 3011 Water Street and 3111 Water Street as a storage and distribution facility for cement products. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-151 to amend Ordinance 2012-54-69 which adopted the general fund budget for FY12-13 and made appropriations pursuant unto to transfer funds in the amount of $7,160,000 from the non-departmental agency rainy day unassigned general fund balance line item and to appropriate $7 million to the finance agency risk management program for the purpose of consummating the proposed resolution in the Rogers versus City of Richmond case by mutual agreement authorized by resolution 2012-R80-87 to appropriate $160,000 to the police agency for the purpose of making other arrangements related to overtime compensation for police officers. Council's public hearing date July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-152 to declare, declare a public necessity Four, and to authorize the acquisition of property identified as a project area and a certain gift and de dedication of real property and development agreement between Gables Hill LLC, Venture Richmond, Inc., and the City of Richmond and Dominion Resources, Inc., currently owned by Gamble Hills, LLC, and to be conveyed to Venture Richmond pursuant to such agreement for a purchase price not to exceed 900 $16,640 for public right-of-way purposes. Council's Planning Commission, July 16th. Council's Land Use Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's Public Hearing Date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-153 to authorize the CAO for and on behalf of the City of Richmond to execute a gift of dedication of real property and development agreement between Gamble Hills LLC Venture Richmond, Inc and the City of Richmond and Dominion Resources and Dominion Resources Services, Inc. for the purpose of the construction of the 2nd Street Connector Road to 
together with sidewalks and utilities between South 2nd Street and Tredegar Street. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-154 to name the roads within the city cemeteries known as Maury Maymont Olivet Cemetery, Oakwood Cemetery, Riverview Cemetery, and Shockle Hill Cemetery as set forth in the attached report entitled Cemetery Street Name Programs. Council's Land Use, Housing and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-155 to repeal Chapter 59, Article 6, Division 2 of the City Code, consisting of Section 58-111 through 58-115, and concerning the Affordable Housing Trust Oversight Board, and to amend and reordain the City Code 58-101, 102, 103, 121, 122, and 123, concerning the Affordable House Housing Trust Fund for the purpose of abolishing the Affordable Housing Trust Fund Oversight Board, modifying certain definitions, modifying the purpose of expenditures from the funds, modifying the eligibility criteria for application for a loan or grant from the fund, and reassessing the powers and duties of the Department of Economic and Community Development to the Chief Administrative Officer or the designee thereof. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Ordinance number 2012-156, to establish an Affordable Housing Trust Fund Advisory Board to provide advice and recommendations to the Council and the Mayor concerning the appropriate regulations for the administration of the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, July 12th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Resolution number 2012-R102 to dispense with the regular meetings of council during the month of August 2012. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Resolution number 2012-R103 to approve the expenditure in the amount of $1,456.04 from the council district funds for the second district to pay the Department of Information Technology for the printing and mailing of the newsletter to second district residents. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. And resolution number 2012-R104 to designate 718 East Franklin Street and 712 North 8th Street as a revitalization area pursuant to the Virginia Code. Council's Land Use, Housing, and Transportation Standing Committee, July 17th. Council's public hearing date, July 23rd. Madam President, that is all of the new legislation that I have for this evening. Thank you, Madam Clerk. At this time, many is adjourned. And we have run just about, let's see, two hours and uh, 15 minutes from the time we got started. Got started tonight at 6.05, had the appointments and reappointments, followed by awards and presentations, and one of the awards going uh, to a lady who uh, was taken from us this past week, Ms. Ruby Turner. And uh, you heard many, many accolades being said about her from the various council members, and uh, all well-deserved, uh, quite a lady, and she definitely will be missed. I'll miss seeing that smiling face there in the front row at every Richmond City Council meeting. I uh, got to the agenda review, then the regular agenda. Only one item on the regular agenda, and that was to conditionally rezone 5817 Bliley Road, 5619 and 5625 Forest Hill, 1664 Limerick and 1664A Limerick uh, Drive from R3 single family to R6 single family attached. That took about 10 minutes. That was approved by a unanimous vote. Got the citizens' comment period, quite interesting citizen comment period tonight if you're watching. Uh, then we got to uh, amendments and continuances of papers. The consent agenda came along. That only took, uh, oh, just a couple of minutes. Let's see, we had about eight minutes for the consent agenda before it was unanimously approved. On that, there was one paper, if you'll notice, uh, Councilman Tyler excused himself from the one paper, abstained because he had a conflict of interest in that one. Uh, we got to the expedited consideration, two papers, two minutes, that was approved, and then the reports from council members, the introduction of papers, and at uh, 20 minutes past 8, our time, 50, eight, uh, 2 hours and 15 minutes after we started, we are adjourned. Our next meeting will be the 23rd of July. Then, as you heard the paper being introduced, they will vote on uh, that meeting to 
uh, do away with the August meetings, which has been uh, traditional except for one year, uh, many years back. But we'll get into that another time. So we will see you again on the 23rd of July. And for Gavel to Gavel, I'm Dick Harmon. Good night.